Hello there and welcome to Wilson Waffling Live, episode 18 recorded on Sunday the 12th of October 2014 that should say, Voting, Discipline and Woodland Waffle. I do apologise for the shaky start. Shaky, shaky, shaky. Anyway, here we go. When I get sorted. Here we go. Um, any second need to put on a different oh here we go you ready so run titles Wilson Waffley So, hi there, and welcome to Wilson Waffling Live at last. Oh, what a, what an awful beginning. I just do not believe that beginning. It, you, There's something. i tell you what it is. When I actually plug my headset in, um, the sound still comes through the speakers of my computer. So all of a sudden, I'm just like this horrendous feedback that you probably heard. And it's just like deafening, and it's like... Ah, and before you know it, you know, I've sort of like got rid of half the viewers and the other half are sort of like ringing, have feedback ringing in their ears. But anyway, to make matters worse, I thought, I know what I'll do. I'll disable the, the speakers and I've disabled the speakers now and I don't know how to re-able them. They, they've just sort of like gone. So I'm just sort of like, after this, after this, I will be doing a f quick phone call to my brother sh basically saying help 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 so oh let me just log in to see my show notes brilliant so first of all um i have redone my graphics notice down here new graphic new graphic can you see well it's not new actually it's the old one reproduced here and but i do have new graphics now and so if um, I will show you them throughout the show. So, but um, remember, if you would like to follow along, then um, the, the the chat is up and running somewhere. I think um, somewhere the chat is up and running on UStream or from my webpage, so you can go along there. And this, of course, uh, where is it? There. This is my um, Twitter. So, by all means, follow me on Twitter and post any replies to me. So, I mean, just to see what you've got, I've got set up. I'm not using Tiny Chat anymore. I'm going to use the um, the um, stream, the um, the um, chat stream from UStream. So, here we go. Are you ready? This this is fancy. I quite like this. I quite like this. Are you ready? And we're going to slide in. There we go. And there's the Twitter chat. There's the um, Ustream chat. Um, as you can see, it is really going well. It's just sort of like humming with activity. Humming with activity. That's me saying hello, by the way. And that was sort of like last night sometime when I, when I tried this up. And we can also go, we can also go to Twitter and do Twitter live. And here we go. Here's Twitter live. And yeah, look. I've even got a tweet coming in, a tweet coming in saying, checking out Wilson Waffly Rye. Yeah, Ricky. Woo. Yeah, thank you. So first tweet as we go through the show. So anyway, back to uh, Wilson Waffling, um, my Wilson Waffling Live main screen. And we've got a range of things for the show today, range of things for the show. And we've got new graphics, like I've said, which you've seen some of, but more to come and some little sound effects as well which you'll be looking forward to and we're going to have a look at the voting that i set up a while back to see how the voting is actually going along i've also got um we're going to um finish off the or start and finish the discussion from the discussion forums on wilson waffling and um forums and we're also going to do ask wilson waffling and see whether or not we've got any questions you know i'm just patting my my hip here because i'm suddenly thinking where's my phone because without my phone, I can't do Wilson Waffling, um, Ask Wilson Waffling. But anyway, let's move on and let's have a look at um, the the exciting voting. So here's a voting so far. 
and you can see Wilson Waffling live voting and we can tell here that Wilson Waffling is still in the lead there, has a huge amount of followers, Wilson Waffling. Wilson Waffling Show and Other are still there. Um, I'll probably keep this open for the rest of the week and then sort of like close it down, I think. But still there. Um, other options, we have no more other options, but we do have Wilson Waffling Weekly and we do have Wilson Waffles and Wilson Waffling. So it looks like, unless there's a dramatic change between now and next week, it does look like we're going to be sticking with Wilson Waffling Live. Because it is live at the moment, but of course a lot of you watch it on YouTube at a later date. So, but that's where it is at the moment. So, um, we have got, um, that's the voting all done for, for this week. So we can check out um if you want to go along and vote then you can go along to um my website uh, wilsonwaffling.co.uk and you can find the the voting there and you can click along if you wish so before we go any further now let's click along and let's look at the discussion forums and so this part of the show is when we look at the discussion forums and see what's going on. So take us to the discussion forums. I am coming back. I am coming back, I promise you. There I am. <laughs> <laughs> now, to be honest with you, I have no idea what that sounded like. No idea what that sounded like at all. Mainly because I had um, no sound coming from my headphones at all. I had no idea what was going on. So I hope it sounded all right. It should have been sort of like a news item with then lots of chattering afterward. And then I forgot which... Um, which um, part of Wirecast I was on. So I was clicking the button and nothing was coming on at all. So that was pretty disastrous. But remember, we are just starting off. Even though this is episode 18, remember, this is all new still. New, just pretend it's new, okay? So let's have a look at the um, discussion forums. And this week's discussion, if you remember, was all about about discipline in schools okay discipline in schools and remember we're looking at this response to low level disruptive behavior and we were looking at the um, the changes that had happened in an academy secondary academy about after the government's response for low level um, disruption so let's zip across to um, the results and we can see the results here and let's have a look what people thought so straight away straight away this was one and these are in no particular order so don't think that it's round the other way or anything like that this is just how it came up so although from experience i agree yeah so this person agrees that low level disruption does affect the class and i think it affects the class and it affects children's learning as well and this is why to me to me i'm very keen itchy eye so i'm very keen to sort of like put things in in place expectations in place early on about what is acceptable and what is not acceptable and if it's not acceptable and it happens then to say that's not acceptable here's the consequence but at the same time be positive around the other way in the sense that if something that is acceptable is happening and that expectation is good then to say well done you know and i think that's a bit that we're not very good at a lot of the time we're not very good at noticing when things are happening that is really well done and saying well done that's fantastic so this person as you can see uh, it's, this person is talking about um, the, the idea that in the report it states that the person that is ultimately responsible for um, low level disruption is the head teacher and and this is really interesting and um, this person says here a head teacher would not be able to be in every classroom enforcing a change of policy like this and it's sometimes easier the, the school has expectations of its pupils as a whole but sometimes easier to implement are the expectations a teacher has on their class and i completely agree with that completely agree with that 
So um, it's a sh shame head teachers. It's a shame head teachers can't be everywhere at once. Yeah, because they are the 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 flagship. They they are top of the hierarchy, and the person who sort of like is the sort of like the ultimate. And after this, nothing else can happen. Okay, so this second person agrees with this and sort of like states that although the presence of a head head teacher is positive, um, head teachers have so many other things to do. Then this um, is maybe not be a priority. But I think the interesting thing is is that where is that priority, and where is the priority in the school or on the head or anything like that? <coughs> I agree here. This is a very interesting point because this person said zero tolerance is a strong phrase and to me runs the risk of some children being severely disciplined for things that may only be happening because they're having a bad day. And I totally accept that, totally think, yeah, that could be the case. And we all have bad, bad days and sometimes it's a case that things are out of the ordinary for that child or um, things are slightly different and you think, oh dear. Now, this is when I have a bit of a quandary because I'm um, very much the case that these are the expectations. Everybody should achieve them no matter what. And once that expectation is there, then that's it. So, for example, if my expectation is that children shouldn't be swinging on chairs, that it doesn't matter who swings on the chair, then the consequence comes into it. And that's it. And that includes times that I've been teaching and, head, and um, student teachers have been swinging on their chairs. And I've said, sorry. And do you know, the interesting thing is there is when the children be going, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, say it to the student, you know, and say, don't do it. And I would say, excuse me, can you not swing in the chair? And I think this zero tolerance um, phrase is really important because remember, it's a hierarchy of um, of responses to, to the discipline. So initially, it might just be a warning then something might happen, then something might happen. So th this is um, really interesting, and, and I agree to some extent, but not to others. But I think the important thing is that when something happens, it's not sort of like, you know, straight up discipline, this, that, detention, lose a play time, go to the head teacher or something. It's sort of like a hierarchy of sort of like moving up and down. Um, I, if you've watched the response um, on from the discussion forums, and you might know that it does seem a very exaggerated response initially, and the idea of that children walking around in silence and and walking in line silences and very strict. And well, I can remember when I was at school, we used to go into the class and we used to stand behind our chairs, and we used to stand behind our chairs until the the teacher or the master said you can sit down boys. I went to an all boys grammar school, so I mean, there was no girls, it was just like, you can sit down boys, or sit down boys, and that used to be, you could take your blazers off boys, and that's it. So, and this is interesting, this comment here, it also takes away the element of enjoyment in and around school, the classroom, and, and I think this is really important, and I think this is getting the balance between behavior and discipline, and enjoyment and teaching and learning and it's almost like I almost like see it as two blocks that you need the discipline if effective discipline and good behavior in first before the teaching and learning can go on top of it and it's very much a case that if I had a teaching session that I had low level disruption in it then I would have to stop I would have to stop and say no I'm not progressing until that's gone okay and I, I agree with this person in the sense that you want that freedom for the children to spark off and sort of like enjoy it. But at the same time, those expectations must be clear. And that, you know, at any time you can pull them back to where you actually want them to be. Um, it's, this one's interesting. Can't help feeling that we always saw a bit of the school's daily routine as well. Yeah, and, and I think this almost like reflects the type of report and the, um, the, the media and the, the way that media interacts and sort of like um, displays what's going on in the school. It's interesting, I'm just going to um, hop over to um, Twitter here um, when it comes to life, hopefully. Um, it's interesting here that um, somebody on Twitter, um, oh, I, th I thought I had a tweet then. Um, but I don't think I have now, unless unless it's just sort of like um, 
re refresh him. We'll we'll see see what happens. Oh yes, yeah. Here we go. Here we go. So th th this is the tweet coming in in the sense that uh, Ricky here said went to school and what and school what do you stand behind your chairs thing never known anyone else who had to do it so it, obviously it was common uh, it's common as people sort of like um, grew up in school and things have changed a bit so 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 this this is really interesting and the, this epic response here um, very um, very large response here and it's interesting that it says on one hand um, I understand why it was done and I do agree that the horror stories that you read is just sort of like unbelievable um, but it's interesting going um, it says the children in the video did seem to have a lot of respect for the teacher okay which helps them keep control and I think the idea is how do you get that respect I think that's really important and it does say here which I thought was a very valid point. It says after a few years, maybe you could reduce the um, discipline. Well, not reduce the discipline, but reduce the level of discipline and to sort of like make it more relaxed. Now, I would say at this point to keep the expectations the same. I think the, the key to effective discipline or well, effective behavior management is to have achievable expectations that are consistent no matter what. And I think if you've got that, then it's fine. And I think once you start veering away from that and making variations, I think that's when you come into problems. Um, this this is the last one. And the response of the academy is very strict and powerful. But I think it's a correct decision due to the high levels of um, misbehavior, which is tr I think is probably true. Do you want to know, I'm just noticing. Next week, I'm going to move my little camera because I have a feeling that if I was over there, when I looked up at this, I would actually be looking up at the writing. So, so next time, next time, I'm going to shift over there. I might actually try it as we speak, but I, I, I'm not. I, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, and it sort of like says um, here, if children were only put slightly punished, they may not f feel that the academy and the staff will affect the massive disruption behavior carried on previously and therefore may find it acceptable to continue acting this way. So a range of really interesting um, re responses um, to to this and thank first of all thank you very much to anybody who participated and sort of like joined in the the discussion I was really um, I really appreciate that and um, if you're one of the students that come to our university then thank you very much it wasn't compulsory as you know so well done for um, engaging if it was somebody from outside the community outside the um, community I shouldn't say that we are the community outside York St John then then that was fantastic as well so um what we need to do now is have a look have a look at next week's um next week's um discussion and ne next next week's discussion is already up it's already up and on the sort of like um web page so if you want to see it you can nip along to uh, wilsonwaffling.co.uk and you'll find it there and the the discussion for next week is this oh i've moved how about that it's not very well done i know but i i've moved so the next week's discussion or in a couple of a couple of um days or i'll just increase this slightly so you can see it um probably next week is this one which is called assessing within a math in a mathematics lesson and if you want to get involved this by all means nip along and have a look at it so basically we have here this is from the national curriculum um remember there's this beyond level an appropriate uh, an alternative assessment method de being developed in school and the idea is is that there's a video here of a mathematics lesson and the survey here is to say basically what do you think about the, um, these two questions are the two that you're replying to. What do you think about the mathematics lesson and can you see assessment like this working? Okay, so there's a survey there. 
If you would like to enter your response into the survey, then it's purely anonymous and you can enter what you wish. And then down here, you can log in to the um, forums and then you can make your comments in here. And if you wish to log into the forums, then there's a button up here that says register for forums. And once you click that, you need to give your name, etc. And if you could put in the subject there, forums. And if you know me from Twitter or anything like that, then put in there your message and then I will send you a password and you can join in the forums. Fantastic. So um, that's the um, discussion for part of the thing. And now we're going to have a look at this week's. Um, oh, what is it this week? This week um, blog post. So let's go across to Wilson Waffling Writes. <laughs> So, did you get? Did you have some music? Did you have some music? I hope you did. I hope you did. So, now we're going to go across to um, this week's um, blog post that I've written, and just give you a sort of like an insight into that, so you can see um, what what we're doing and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. I hope that music. Please tell me that that music's not still playing. So, this week's uh, Wilson Waffling blog post is called. Um, real or virtual school trips okay real or virtual school trips and i must admit do, 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 do you like the picture do, do you like the picture look oh uh, that's this that's this sort of like pop it do, 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 do. this is me on a bus look <laughs> this is me the driver this is me driving and this is a blank thing and we're on a we're on a green background anyway it took me a while to do that i was quite chuffed about that so remember um if you wish to look watch wilson waffling or listen to the blog post it is in audio form here that you can listen to and also remember look somebody's liked it already there is a, a thumbs up system here to sort of like rate it to say whether or not you've enjoyed it this is new i've put this um in new to, to see whether or not I get any responses. It's, I'm, I'm getting, trying to get as close to Facebook as I possibly can because I know people like it in Facebook. So, and I this I, I mentioned at the front that this, this title is a bit of a fib because I really wanted just to talk about school trips, but I wanted to put a technology slant on it as well because, and try to get some more views. Mm, not very good, I know. But anyway, basically, I've se separated up this week's waffle into areas. So we got here. Um, all the, now, hang on. Let, let's go back a stage because the first thing I would like to say is that I really believe in school trips. I really believe in school trips and I think that it's absolutely fantastic. And when I was out teaching, which is only about five years ago now in primary school, I still teach at higher education. I used to try to go on a trip at least once a term and this might be from bird watching to university or to the local shops to events to the theatre and one thing that I was really I really liked and I really did like about it was that when we used to go out on trips especially when we go to certain settings the the sense of awe and wonder the children used to have when they used to go in and see it for the first time and I speak about it in this part of the blog in the sense that Sometimes the children had never been. I, I, we used to take the children to the pantomime or horrible histories at the local theatre. And sometimes the children had never been to a theatre. They'd never been to a theatre. And their faces when they went and they looked round at this wonderful, fantastic place was fantastic. I loved it. And I, I mentioned in the blog post that once I was sat there and I had, you know how you put the children who have, um, who tend to get overexcited or tend to have problems at anxiety in public places or different places or even not the best behaved children next year I remember this child turning to me and, and whispering to me and saying Mr Wilson I think this is the poshest place I've ever been in and this is like the grand opera house in, um, in York and, that, and I thought that's fantastic so and I think if they remember these places it impacts on their learning and it may it makes the learning that's happened there so much more real and memorable, and so this sense of awe and run, wonder is fantastic. Now, my problem with this, and anybody who knows me is probably saying at this point, "Oh, waffling Wilson, you're going to have to go back on your something here," because I don't think 
I, I, I'm, a, I'm not a great traveller, okay? And I'm not a great traveller at all. And I find it very difficult to travel and I don't like travelling. And if there was a, play, a, a way that I could teleport from place to place, then that would be absolutely fantastic. But there isn't. And... And so I sort of like often say to myself, you know, I much prefer the internet. I can go and see all these places. But there have been areas, settings that I've been, and I've sort of like tried to capture the the mood or the um, ambiance, posh word, eh? Ambiance there. But I've taken a photograph and I can't. And I think this is the same with awe and wonder sometimes. You know, we can't virtually put the children there because it misses something that uh, almost like ethereal property, that intangible property that you can't actually hold or touch or grab hold of. And it's different for every child and virtually that can't happen. And so sometimes you need to actually be there. So th that was awe and wonder. And I think with awe and wonder, technology can't sort of like impact on it. Now, my, my next part is um, being an expert. And I think this is where technology can be. And, you know, subject knowledge is really important. And we've got a university challenge at university coming up um, between tutors and students. And, oh, I'm not looking forward to it. I'm on the team. Me on the team. If you if you read last week's Why I Waffle, you can see why this is sort of like worrying. And it's almost like this... this um, view that primary teachers know everything because they're teachers you know anything absolutely anything um anything in the world we know the the answer to and and i think this is this is the difficulty and this is what i feel really worried about in the sense that there's going to be questions i know about science and computing and mathematics and two things will happen number one or three things number one i'll be daydreaming and i'll miss it number two I just won't know the answer and I'll just come across like an idiot. Is it like you teach this Ian and you don't know the answer? And or thirdly, um, I'm going to give a stupid answer. So my subconscious is going to be saying this is the answer, this is the answer, but I'm just going to give a ridiculous one. You know, I, I, I'm hoping it's multiple choice. I really am hoping. Anyway, back to the blog points. So we're going to be an expert and what are when you start teaching, it's sort of like, oh, there's all these things that you need to know. And it, and it's only when you sort of like um, come back to it and you sort of like really sort of like focus in that you, you actually develop your um, subject knowledge as, as you get more experience. And, and as you get more experience, your subject knowledge increases. But one thing that I think is, is really important is that by going on school trips, you meet these other experts and you engage with these experts and a lot of the time I've been places that I've actually listened to the expert and my subject knowledge has increased as well and the, as well as the kids you know and there's also this um this wonderful thing that um the 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 guides or the experts give you information that is so sort of like not in any books you know not in any books at all and it's just sort of like this is the sort of like information that I love and I remember. And I, and I think it, it's really important to sort of like keep that and sort of like maintain that sort of like expert idea. And, and this is when I think technology sort of like really comes in. And you know, that there, there's times now we have Skype, we have conference chats, we have um, Google Hangouts, and it's really nice to be able to draft in you know, experts. And I've heard schools, I've talked to authors on conference chat or Google Hangouts or something or Skype. And, um, but this is when, you know, you might be able to go to an area, a local area and talk to a museum expert, but you can't really go to NASA and talk to a space expert. And this is when technology really comes in and sort of like have that expert sort of like talking to you. I remember when I recently, when I was a governor, I had to reply to the class that sent me letters and I did this via YouTube and recorded my responses so they could watch it. You know, it would have been fantastic to do a, a Skype conversation with them as well. So finally, finally, in this week's Wilson Waffling, I talk about real life context and this idea that um, going outside, at the, I, sometimes I feel that 
our learning environment is sort of like dislocated or disconnected from the actual real world. And we, especially in mathematics, we sort of like teach from textbooks or teach sort of like abstract ideas without linking it to the sort of like um, to the real world. And I think this is really important. And to take on school trips and actually go out and encounter real life and interact with real life and see things happening, I think is really important. And, you know, when I've, I've been on school trips that I've been to Victorian classrooms or Roman forts and actually dressed up and participated, and that makes it very memorable. And it goes back to that awe and wonder sort of like aspect and sort of like makes that learning um, in that place sort of like really memorable and enjoyable. Now, it's interesting. I, I think I might be a bit controversial in this post, so, and which I try not to be because I don't want to sort of like... Um, dramatize is that a word did i just make that word up somebody's probably saying no it's made up wordy and um I, I want to sort of like i don't like being controversial but i do think that i really do think that trips and visits are essential part of learning i think actually visiting these places um, is actually essential and I think the interesting thing is here I mention it here that technology could be used effectively alongside real trips to support the application of skills and real life but they're not it's not a replacement it can never replace um, that awe and wonder so so that's this week's waffle so if you'd like to go along and have a read or have a listen then nip along to wilsonwaffling.co.uk and have a look at it and have a, a read and and see see what you think so that's this week's waffle now we we're going to have to do something a bit strange here we're going to have to do something a bit strange because i'm missing something okay i'm missing something so we're going to have a slight interlude this is the interlude, okay? So I'm going to do this. We're going to do this and have a slight interlude while I grab my phone. Here we go, interlude happening. The number you have dialed has been changed. The new number is... Ask Waffling Wilson. Please note, the new number is... Ask Waffling Wilson. Hello?
อ oh. ๋จิตยูคุณจะบอกฉันว่าไมค์สเปนมิวต์ไม่ใช่ไหมคุณจะบอกฉันว่าไมค์สเปนมิวต์ไม่ใช่ไหมคุณจะบอกฉันว่าไมค์สเปนมิวต์ไม่ใช่ไหมคุณจะบอกฉันว What I I have no idea what you heard and what you did to here. Okay, then. so recap, recap. Uh, best Star Wars character was Yoda. That was why I was doing this. And then, um, if you do want to ask me any question, <laughs> oh God, <laughs> you know, uh, I promise, I promise, I will get better at this. I really do promise. Um, if you do want to ask me anything, then by all means go to this place here on my webpage at wilsonwaffling.co.uk and click Ask Me there, and then we'll go back to this and I will answer some of these questions. <laughs> you know, can I just say that if you're watching this for the first time, I apologise. We've had sound issues throughout. I'm going to rename this rubbish. Podcast. Anyway, anyway, we we'll stick with it. I'll get better. So here we go. I got a really interesting ca um, question about four days ago, and I have no idea who it's from, but it was an interesting question. It says, "What advice would you give to those who have thought about teaching but have no idea where to start?" Now, whoever gave this question, that is a very good question, very good question. So here's my response. Number one, make sure you want to teach. Okay, make sure you want to teach. Teaching is everybody thinks they could teach. I, I really do think, and there, a lot of people think it's very easy, and you can just turn up and do it. It's difficult. It's very difficult. It's very hard work, and there's a lot to it, and there's a lot of communication skills that you need. So, the first thing I would do is. Make go along to somewhere local, your local school or something like that, and get involved with the the life of the school. Volunteer and be active and be proactive and get in there and see whether or not you like it. See whether or not you can take small groups and you know interact with the children. Second thing I would say to do is therefore depending at which level of education you're at and. If you're sort of like going up to, um, to eventually to do a degree, then I would definitely start to concentrate on your studies and get your good GCSE marks first, and then do the A levels that you wish and enjoy those. Um, but check out with universities what whether or not they have any specific um, requirements as to the um, the um, um, subjects that you need. Work very hard because you need lots of points, and points means you'll be a good teacher. No, points means you could get a good UCAS application and get in there. So really work hard, but at the same time volunteer, and volunteer for after-school clubs, youth groups, church groups, sports clubs, anything. The more interaction you can have with kids and leading kids, the better. Then what I would say to you is that if you enjoy that. If you enjoy that interaction with children, in the sense that you're teaching them things on a voluntary basis, then that is the key to teaching. And there's a lot of other things that go around teaching, but that's the core. And I often say to my students, you know, after difficult placements or things like that, I say to them, when they say I don't know whether or not I want to be a teacher anymore, is I always say to them, when you are in that classroom with the kids, how do you feel? And if they say I absolutely love it, I love the interaction, then that's a real sign of a good teacher. And everything else, subject knowledge, planning, timing, and things like that, can be adjusted, can be worked on. But that that sort of like intrinsic love of teaching cannot be. So I would say, if you don't know where to start, volunteer, get in there and interact with children. Then work on your studies. And then get into a, a good university that's going to teach you the good teaching and learning. We call it pedagogy. Okay, and get in there and start to enjoy it. So that was the only question I had. That was it, apart from Star Wars as well, which 
I, I can't believe that came up. So um, let me just check. So that was um, Ask Wilson Waffling. So the next thing that we have on my thing is, oh, we're, we're nearly to the end. We're nearly to the end. So, oh, what time? 40 minutes. 40 minutes and about 20 minutes of that. I didn't have the microphone on. Fantastic. Just what we wanted. So um, just to recap, um, if you would like to follow me on um, Twitter, then my handle is at IWilsonYSJ. Always love to see you on there and get involved and reply to my tweets. Ask me questions on there as well if you wish. Also remember, you can um, follow me um, you can go to my webpage, which is wilsonwaffling.co.uk, and from there you can see a lot of different things. You can see, you can go to YouTube, watch me on live, um, or go direct to my YouTube channel by pressing the little YouTube button up here. You can see that is my um, last week's Goodbye Pixelated Man. And that's when I got my new computer. There's also, you can follow me on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. So by all means, pop along and see me there. The links are up on the top up here that you can go along to. Um, there's also, I'm also on Instagram, if you'd like to follow me on Instagram. Get involved, by all means, click on any of my recent posts and rate them if you wish, that's absolutely fine. There's also, um, you can register for the forums and get involved in the forums if you wish. And you can either do that anonymously or you can sign up for the forums and get involved and vote there. Now, just before we go today, I would just also like you to, like to bring to your attention um, a, a colleague of mine, my sister, um, has started a new um a new um, website called uh, Woodland Sprites. It's just starting up. It's just starting up. Here's, here it is. And it's all to do with um, forest schools to outdoor education and everything in between. So it's basically just starting at the moment. You can see we're creating the new site there, but there's some content up there already. If you like to go along and actually have a look at that, then by all means go along. If forest schools and outdoor education is your thing, then go along, have a look at it, and that will be increasing as we go along. So by all means go and have a look. So we're coming to the end of Wilson Waffling Live. Oh, that's what I need, isn't it? I need a oh. So I hope you've enjoyed the show today. I hope you've enjoyed it. And I do hope the loss of sound hasn't put you off. Um, things will get better. Remember, there's only me here. I don't have an, an executive producer or anything like that. I'm trying to fiddle all the buttons and work all my screens at the same time at the same time let's just let's just before we go let's zip along to the chat because the chat has been going wild no it hasn't that's it i don't perhaps it's broken perhaps, perhaps it's not actually working at all perhaps perhaps it's apps actually broken and but there has been some activity on twitter here we are on Twitter. So well done, Ricky. Keep up the good work interacting there throughout the show. So by all means, go and have a look what Ricky's been saying on um, Twitter. So we're coming to the end now. So by all means, um, hope you've enjoyed the show. If you would like to get updates, then you can either follow me on you, Ustream on, on wilsonwaffling.co.uk or subscribe to my YouTube channel. So that's it now. So... Um, I would like to say goodbye and have fun and we and I will see you all next week. Let's hope I can get the ending right. Bye.